Hello and good, good welcome all of you for uh, today's mathematics class. Very good morning to all of you. Okay. So let's discuss continuity. Okay. So yesterday one of you were asking sir synopsis of continuous functions. Okay. So let me briefly explain what are continuous functions and then I'll move forward. Okay. So So just observe, let f of x be any function. Let uh, f of x be any function and uh, a be a point in its domain. Then uh, limit uh, extends to a f of x is equal to f of x. When x approaches a, whether it is from left side or from right side, if f of x approaches the value f of a, then we say that f of x is continuous at x is equal to a. So when I say limit extends to a f of x, its meaning is limit extends to a minus f of x is equal to limit extends to a plus f of x that is equal to f of a. The left hand limit, this is the left hand limit, must be equal to the right hand limit, must be equal to the functional value. If the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit, is equal to the functional value, then we say that the function is continuous at x is equal to a. Okay. Then when a function is defined in an open interval, let us say the function is defined in open in an open interval a b, the domain of this function is this interval, open interval a b. Then if the function is continuous at each and every point in this interval, if it is continuous at each and every point in its interval, in its domain, then we say that it is a continuous function. So we say f of x is a continuous function, f of x equal to, for example, I'll take f of x equal to sine x is a continuous function. So when I write it is a continuous function, its meaning is that it is continuous throughout its domain. What is the domain of sine x? The domain of sine x is the set of all real numbers. For all real numbers, this function is continuous. Then I can also say f of x equal to tan x is a continuous function. When I say it is a continuous function, I am talking about the continuity of this function in its domain. What is the domain of this function? The domain of tan x is the set of all real numbers except the odd multiples of pi by 2. Okay, when I write 2n plus 1 into pi by 2, put n is an integer, uh, all these will be odd multiples of pi by 2. I mean, tan x is not continuous at pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2, etc. At all those points, tan x is not continuous. Everywhere else, it is continuous. But uh, when you are talking about continuity of this function, we can say it is continuous in its domain. The domain of this function is the set of all reals except the odd multiples of pi by 2. Okay. So then, if a function is defined in closed interval, let us say the function is defined in a closed interval, then if you are talking about continuity at A, so there we cannot find out right hand limit, left hand limit. So we can only find out right hand limit if a right hand limit is equal to f of A. If right hand limit is equal to the functional value at A, then we say that the function is continuous at A because we cannot find out left hand limit there. In general, left-hand limit, observe here, left-hand limit is equal to right-hand limit is equal to the functional value. If all three coincide, then only we say the function is continuous at that point. Whereas, if the function is defined in a closed interval AB, where uh, at A, there, if right-hand limit is equal to functional value, we say that it is continuous at A. Then at B, we can only find left hand limit. Left hand limit is equal to the functional value. Functional value means now in this case f of B. So if right hand limit is equal to the functional value, then we say that f of x is continuous at B. Okay. Then uh, if it is uh, in general, if it is an interior point of that domain, uh, interior point means uh, in this interval, interior point means other than A and B. All other points which are in between A and B, they are all called interior points. If it is an interior point, then to say that it is continuous at that point, 
left hand limit must be equal to the right hand limit is equal to the functional value if it is a closed interval if it is an end point of the closed interval interval then for the left left side there at a right hand limit must be equal to functional value and at b left hand limit must be equal to functional value then we say that it is continuous then uh, mod x mod x is continuous everywhere another way see when it comes to the ct examination there they don't ask you from which method you have got the answer what is the correct method actual method no one cares okay the only thing is uh, how you get the correct i mean whether you get the right answer or not and uh, in how quickly you get that right answer that is what matters not the actual method okay so now there uh, you should know this if you know the graph of that function say for example i'm looking at mod x mod x graph can be drawn without lifting the pen right so you don't see any break anywhere so this is a continuous function then see this is the graph of mod x then if i draw here this is the graph of mod of x minus 1 modulus of x minus 1 that is also continuous mod x minus 2 x minus 2 would be here it will touch x axis at 2 this is 0 1 2 so in that way and here if i draw please don't mind i am very poor in drawing so here we should not lift the pen without lifting the pen we can draw this graph is mod of x plus 1 okay so observe all these functions they are all continuous functions okay continuous everywhere then if you look at step x the greatest integer function earlier also we have discussed this these two are very important functions okay so from 0 to 1 it is 0 from 1 to 2 it is 1 from 2 to 3 okay this is how the graph looks like okay so as you observe at every integer we have to lift the pen when we draw this graph at every integer we have to lift so that means and you can also observe you can observe the break at all those integers therefore step x is continuous where it is continuous it is discontinuous at all integers okay at 0 1 2 3 4 5 etc minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and all those points at all those points step x is discontinuous then where it is continuous say on z it is discontinuous therefore on r minus z r minus z indicates set of all real numbers except the set of integers set of all reals except the set of integers there it is continuous uh, on z it is discontinuous okay so then this is about uh, continuity let us just have a look at uh, the synopsis what they have given okay so look at this now continuity of a function a function f of x is said to be continuous at x equal to a if limit extends to a f of x is equal to f of x f of a if a limit extends to a f of x is not equal to f of a then f of x is discontinuous at x is equal to a if limit extends to a plus f of x equal to f of a then f of x is right continuous at x equal to a then uh, if limit extends to a minus f of x uh, is equal to f of a then f of x is left continuous at x is equal to a okay then observe if f is continuous at x equal to a and g is continuous at f of a then g circle f is continuous at x equal to a okay so in general you can say that the composite of uh, two functions is also continuous if f is continuous g is continuous then f composition g in other words f circle g is continuous as well as g circle f it is also continuous function okay so then every constant function is continuous on r the identity function is continuous on r 
identity function. What do you mean by identity function? Identity function means f of x is equal to x. It is a function which maps mapping. Mapping is another word for function. f of x equal to x. It is a function. An identity function is a function which maps every element to itself. I mean. Uh, the even in other words, the image of every element is that element itself. In other words, f of one is equal to one, f of two is two, f of three is three, f of four is four, f of one point five is one point five, f of six point two is six point two, etc. So, if you try to draw the graph of this function, the graph of this function is the straight line y is equal to x. Okay. So this is the line y is equal to x, that is f of x equal to x. This identity function is a continuous function. Okay, then every polynomial function is continuous on R. This we have proved during our PUC class. The functions sin x, cos x are continuous on R. The function sin x and cos x are continuous on R. The functions tan x and secant x are continuous on r minus, okay, look here, r minus 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. So, where n is an integer, what does it tell you? That is, at all odd multiples of pi by 2, tan x as well as secant x, they are discontinuous. Everywhere else, it is continuous. Then, the functions cot x and cosecant x are continuous on r minus n pi. The functions cos x, and cot x and cosecant x. Observe, cot pi by 2 is not defined. It tends to infinity. So, there it is discontinuous at all odd multiple of pi. Not pi by 2. So, odd multiple of pi. I mean, cot 0, cot pi, cot 2 pi. Any multiple of pi. r minus n pi means set of all reals except the multiples of pi. At all multiples of pi, cot x is a discontinuous function and so is cosecant x. Everywhere else it is continuous. So now what they are saying, the functions cot x and cosecant x are continuous on r minus n pi, which indicates the set of all reals except the multiples of pi. At all multiples of pi, it is discontinuous Everywhere else, it is continuous. Okay. So then, the function f of x is equal to mod x is continuous on R. Already I have explained you. The functions f of x is equal to e power x and f of x is equal to a power x, a positive, is continuous. The function f of x is equal to step x is continuous at all non-integral values and discontinuous at all integral values. Just now I told you. On R minus Z, it is continuous. On Z, it is discontinuous. Okay. So, then uh, some more shortcuts. So quite a few shortcuts are given. But uh, I don't advise you to remember all this. Because remembering all of them, all of these formulae are uh, not that easy. Whatever I have told you so far, that much you remember, it's enough. Okay. So, the uh, rest of the things are not that essential. Okay. So, now let's discuss the problems. Okay, so now here is a function, question 94. The function f of x defined by f of x is equal to x into sine 1 by x for x not equal to 0. And it is 0 for x equal to 0 is continuous at x equal to 0, right continuous at x equal to 0, left continuous cannot be determined. Okay, so at x equal to 0, what happens to this function? That is what we have to find out. So the, the function defined like this, f of x is equal to x sine 1 by x for x not equal to 0 and 0 for x is equal to 0. So from this it is clear that f of 0 is equal to 0. So now whether it is right continuous or left continuous or continuous, let us observe. Okay. So I'll evaluate this limit limit extends to 0, f of x. Here to the left side of 0 and to the right side of 0, function is defined in the same way. So, we can write this as a limit extends to 0, f of x. f of x can be written as x sine 1 by x. Okay. 
So we can write this as, this is a very well-known formula for you already. We has come across this. Limit extends to zero X into limit extends to zero sine one by X. Now as X approaches zero, this will be equal to zero. Okay. And what happens to this? So when X approaches zero, one by X will tend to infinity sine of infinity. It is, we don't know what is its exact value, but we know that uh, it is a finite value between uh, it is a finite uh, value between minus one and one. So this product zero into that quantity between minus one and one, that will give you zero. So f of zero is also zero. From this we observe that limit extends to zero f of x is equal to f of zero. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equal to zero, which means first option is the answer. It is continuous at x equal to zero. Okay, next word, next function, next problem. 95th function. 95th question. If the function f of x is equal to sine See, don't ask the same question again and again. We need the, so many times I have told you, even though that it is infinite, it is not infinite, it is finite. Between my uh, sine of infinity, you take it to, see, x value is, look at the graph of sine x. This is the graph of sine x, right? So now what we are doing is, we are taking this x to infinity. Now I am saying that even though x approaches infinity, graph of sine x, what is the value of y? f of x will lie in between minus 1 and 1. It, this graph will not come below minus 1, will not go above plus 1, right? So it is between minus 1 and 1, 0 into that value between minus 1 and 1, that product will become 0. It is not becoming infinite. x is becoming infinite, not sine 1 by x. x is becoming 0, so 1 by x is becoming infinite. Sign of infinity is also something between minus one and one. We don't know what is its exact value, but it is some number between minus one and one. So zero into that will be equal to zero. Okay. So now 95th question. If the function f of x is equal to sine square ax divided by x square, for x not equal to 0 and it is 1 for x is equal to 0 is continuous at x equal to 0 then a is equal to. So this function is defined like this f of x is equal to sine square a x divided by x square for x not equal to 0. When x is not equal to 0 it is defined as sine square a x by x square and it is defined as 1 for x is equal to 0. Given that it is continuous at x equal to 0, then a is equal to. Given that it is continuous at x equal to 0. Okay. Since it is continuous at x equal to 0, I can write limit extends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0. So limit extends to 0 f of x. What is f of x? sine square ax divided by x square. That's equal to f of 0. What is f of 0? 1. They have given f of 0 is 1. Limit extends to 0 sine square ax by x square. We have to evaluate this limit now. Say I'll write like this. Limit extends to 0. You have sine square ax in the denumerator. That means we want AX whole square in the denominator. But in the denominator, we have only X square. So what do I do? I'll multiply and divide by A square. So, as, so I'll make it as AX whole square. X square is already there. So I want to make it as AX square, AX whole square. Now as X approaches zero, AX also approaches zero. Therefore, sine square AX by AX whole square, this will become one. So then you have on LHS, so 1 into A square, that will be A square. A square is equal to 1. Therefore, A is equal to plus or minus 1. 
plus or minus 1, which means the first option. Okay, next question. 98th question. If f of x is equal to 1 plus x when x less than or equal to 1, 3 minus ax square when x greater than 1 is continuous at x equal to 1, then a is equal to 1. Okay. So, now it is continuous at x equal to 1, they have given. If it is continuous at x equal to 1, we can write uh, limit x tends to 1 minus f of x. Here we have to go for left hand limit and right hand limit separately because to the left side of 1 and to the right side of 1, function is defined in two different ways. So, limit x tends to 1 minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 1 plus f of x is equal to f of 1. So, limit x tends to 1 minus, when x approaches 1 from left side, there the function is defined as 1 plus x. That's equal to limit x tends to 1 from right side, there the function is defined as 3 minus ax square is equal to f of 1. Put x equal to 1 there, 1 plus 1, that will give you 2. Okay. So, here also this will also give you 2. Here, uh, if you apply the limit as x tends to 1, you are going to get a 3 minus a is equal to 2. Therefore, a is equal to 1. Put x equal to 1 here, 3 minus a you get, which is equal to 2. Hence, a is equal to 1. Once again, first option. Next. 99th question. The function f of x equal to mod x by x at x equal to 0. It is left continuous, right continuous, continuous, discontinuous. Mod x by x, it is nothing but the sinum function. At x equal to 0, sinum function is discontinuous. Okay. So, that directly you can write or else if you want explanation, left hand limit, left hand limit, I want to, to test the continuity at a 0. So, left hand limit, limit extends to 0 minus f of x. That is equal to limit extends to 0 minus mod x by x. When x approaches uh, for 98, the answer is first option. You got a is equal to 1. 3 minus a is equal to 2. Therefore, a is equal to 1, actually. Okay. So, left hand limit. X is approaching 0 from left side. When x approaches 0 from left side, mod x is defined as minus x. Minus x divided by x. x, x gets cancelled. This is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus 1. Limit x tends to 0 minus 1 is equal to minus 1. Left hand limit is minus 1. Right hand limit. Limit x tends to 0 plus f of x. That's equal to limit x tends to 0 plus f of x. f of x is mod x divided by x. That is equal to limit x tends to 0 mod x, when x approaches 0 from right side, mod x can be defined as x, x by x is equal to 1. So, limit x tends to 0, 1 is equal to 1. Left hand limit is minus 1, right hand limit is plus 1. So, it is discontinuous. Okay. So, you need not prove all these things. Directly, you can also write uh, mod x by x. It is nothing but the uh, sinum function. Sinum function, as you know, it is discontinuous at x equal to 0. Okay, so 102, the set of points of discontinuity of the function f of x is equal to 1 by x square plus x plus 1. Null set, set of all real numbers, singleton set containing 0 and r minus set of all non and set of all negative reals. Okay, now you observe numerator is 1. 1 is a constant function. And you know that every constant function is continuous. So, numerator is continuous. And denominator, denominator is x square plus x plus 1. x square plus x plus 1. That is a polynomial function. We know that every polynomial function is continuous. Okay. So, now suppose if you have 
P of x divided by Q of x. If P is continuous, Q is continuous. P is continuous, Q is continuous. Then can we say P by Q is continuous? Yes, it is continuous. But provided there is some small star mark condition supply. What is that condition supply? The condition is that the denominator should not be equal to zero. So this function, one is continuous everywhere. X square plus X plus one is also continuous everywhere. Okay. Now this function f of x, one by this, will be continuous everywhere, provided denominator is non-zero. So what we should do is, you identify where this denominator becomes zero. Whenever the denominator becomes zero, at that point, it will be discontinuous. Everywhere else, it will be continuous. Okay. At all those points where the denominator is zero, there it will be discontinuous. Everywhere else, it will be continuous. Okay. So now look at this, x square plus x plus one. I will equate this to zero. I want to know when it will become zero. Okay, x square plus x plus one equal to zero. What kind of roots it has? You just observe whether it has real root, imaginary root, real and equal. Okay, so for that you'll find out delta discriminator. B square minus four AC, four into one into one, into one. So delta is negative. Delta negative means the roots are imaginary, right? So roots are imaginary means this quadratic equation will never become zero for any real value of x. It will be zero for imaginary values of x. This continuity and all we can only explain for real functions, not for uh, imaginary functions because for imaginary functions, we, for, we cannot draw the graph. So uh, for real functions, x square plus x plus one, for any real value of x, this will not become zero, which means x square plus x plus one is continuous everywhere. It is never equal to zero. So it is a continuous function everywhere. Therefore, uh, one by x square plus x plus one is also continuous everywhere. Here the question is set of points of discontinuity. They're asking where it is discontinuous. Nowhere it is discontinuous. It is continuous everywhere. So the answer is null set. The points of discontinuity, observe carefully, points of discontinuity is null set. If the same question, if they ask you, set of points of continuity, then the answer would have been R. Understand the question carefully. If they ask you the set of points of continuity of this function, then it is continuous everywhere. So R would have been the answer. But now they have asked us to find out the points where it is discontinuous. It is discontinuous nowhere. Okay. So null set is the answer. Next question. The function f of x equal to cos x minus sin x divided by cos x cos 2x is not defined at x equal to pi by 4. The value of f of pi by 4, we should assign a value for f of pi by 4, it should be defined at pi by 4 in such a way that, so that f of x is continuous at x equal to pi by 4. So they have defined like this, f of x is equal to cos x minus sin x divided by cos 2x when x is not equal to pi by 4. At x equal to pi by 4, as of now, they have not defined anything. Okay. Now you have to define, you have to find a value here such that f of x is continuous. We have to make it as continuous at x equal to pi by 4. Okay. So I'll take this as k. How we should define this in such a way that it should be continuous at x equal to pi by 4. If it is continuous at x equal to pi by 4 means limit x tends to pi by 4 f of x must be equal to f of pi by 4. What is f of pi by 4? We don't know. So I took it as a k. 
So now limit extends to pi by 4 f of x. So what is f of x? Cos x minus sin x divided by cos 2x is equal to f of pi by 4. Okay. So instead of directly differentiating, if you directly apply the limit, you will get 0 by 0. Instead of going for L hospital flow, we can further simplify here. What is that simplification? Cos 2x can be written as cos square x minus sin square x. Cos 2x can be written as cos square x minus sin square x. You know this part. Okay. So now, I'll write cos square x minus sin square x as uh, cos x plus sin x into cos x minus sin x. Okay, a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. So this cos x minus sin x gets cancelled. So what do you get? Limit extends to pi by 4. 1 divided by cos x by cos x plus sin x. 1 divided by cos x plus sin x. That's equal to f of pi by 4. Apply the limit now. As x tends to pi by 4, we are going to get uh, 1 by cos pi by 4 plus sin pi by 4. Cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Sin pi by 4 is also 1 by root 2. So what do we get then? 1 by, we get the next question here. Okay, so before that I should complete. Uh, 1 by 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2, that will give you 2 by root 2. 2 by root 2 means root 2. So f of pi by 4 is equal to 1 by root 1 divided by root 2. Okay. Now, 1 not 5. 1 by root 2 means which option? First option. First option is the answer. Okay, look at the next question. Question number 1 not 5. If the function f of x is equal to 2 power x plus 2 minus 16 divided by 4 power x minus 16 for x not equal to 2 and it is a for x equal to 2 is continuous at x is equal to 2, then a is equal to 2. Okay, many students uh, say, uh, I don't know what happens after uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, uh, the number of participants uh, starts to come down. See, if you are thinking to leave this meeting, then imagine that uh, you will get one less mark in CET and uh, four marks less in your PUC exam. All these questions are important from PUC's perspective also. So imagine that, uh, keep this in mind, that uh, if you leave the meeting early, you will lose uh, one mark in CET. And that one mark will lead to around, uh, say, 500 to 1,000 rank variation. Okay? And four marks in PUC. Okay. So keep that in mind and then leave the meeting, if you feel so. Okay. So, now don't worry, I'll complete as early as possible. As soon as I complete first level, I'll leave today. Okay. So, 105. If the function f of x is equal to 2 power x plus 2 minus 16 divided by 4 power x minus 16 for x not equal to 2. And it is a for x is equal to 2. Is continuous at x equal to 2. Then is a is equal to or maybe are you leaving the meeting just because you feel that all these problems are very simple, sorry, simply wasting our time. I can do it uh, on my own. Okay. So I don't know if that is your intention. Okay. f of x is equal to 2 power x plus 2 minus 16 divided by 4 power x minus 16 for x not equal to 2. And it is a for x is equal to 2. Okay, students, whatever the doubts you have or if you feel that any problem to be explained again, uh, you ask me at the end of the session, not in between. Okay, so uh, at the end, uh, I'll answer all your queries. Okay. 
So f of x is defined like this, 2 power x plus 2 minus 16 divided by 4 power x minus 16 when x not equal to 2 and it is a when x is equal to 2. It is continuous at x equal to 2, then a is equal to 2. It is continuous at x equal to 2. It is continuous at x equal to 2 means we can say that limit extends to 2 f of x is equal to f of 2. So, limit extends to 2 f of x. What is f of x? 2 to the power x plus 2 minus 16 divided by 4 power x minus 16. Okay. So, this must be equal to f of 2. What is our f of 2? A. Okay. So, this limit value itself will be the value of A. If I directly apply the limit, see what happens. 2 plus 2, 4. Okay. 2 to the power 4 is 16. 16 minus 16, that will be 0. Denominator, 4 square, 4 square is 16. 16 minus 16, that is also 0. 0 by 0, therefore, I will use L hospital student. Derivative of 2 power x plus 2 is 2 power x plus 2 into log 2 divided by 4 power x minus 16 is there, whose derivative is 0. Derivative of 4 power x is 4 power x into log 4 okay, is equal to a. Now, apply the limit as x tends to 2. When x tends to 2, what do we get? Uh, 2 to the power 2 plus 2, 4 into log 2. Into log 2. Divided by, put x equal to here. 4 square into log 4. four 2 power 4 is 16, 4 square is also 16. Log 2. 4 lo log 4 is there now. Log 4 can be written as 2 log 2. Is equal to a. How? 4 can be written as 2 square. Then log m power n is equal to n log m. Log 2 square can be written as 2 log 2. Now log 2 log 2 gets cancelled. Therefore, a is equal to 1 by 2. a equal to 1 by 2 is the correct answer. Which is the second option. 1 by 2 is the right answer. Okay. Now look at question number 108. If the function f of x is equal to 1 minus cos 4x by x square if x less than 0, a if x is equal to 0, and root x by root of 16 plus root x minus 4 if x greater than 0, is continuous at x equal to 0, then a is equal. It is continuous at x equal to 0 means left hand limit must be equal to right hand limit is equal to the functional value f of 0. Right? So, all three must be equal. But now they have already given that it is continuous. So, we have to assume that they are equal. Okay? It is not that we are trying to prove that it is continuous. So, see actually yeah, this question when, when asked in PUC you have to evaluate all three. But now it is asked in CET, you find out any one of these. LHL is equal to F of A or RHL is equal to F of A. Any one you do, then you will get the answer. Okay. So limit extends to 0 minus F of X is equal to F of 0. Is equal to F of 0. So left hand limit, what do you have there? 1 minus cos 4X divided by X square is equal to f of 0 is a. That value only we have to find. Limit extends to 0, 1 minus cos 4x. If I directly apply the limit, I am going to get cos 0 here. Cos 0 is 1, 1 minus 1, 0, divided by x square. There, if I am putting x equal to 0, that will also be 0. 0 by 0 is an indeterminate form. Use L hospital's rule. Derivative of minus cos 4x. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. So, derivative of cos 4x will be minus sin 4x into 4. Minus is already there. So, it will become sin 4x into 4 divided by x square. Derivative x square is 2x. Okay. So, now you have uh, sin 4x in the numerator. When you have sin 4x in the numerator, you prefer 4x in the denominator. Okay. So, from where did I get this? Right. 
right? So this 2x is there, na? I'm writing 2x as uh, I'm multiplying and dividing by 2 here. Okay, multiply and dividing by 2. This 2 into 2x will become 4x. This 4 into 2 will remain. As x approaches 0, sin 4x by 4x becomes 1. The 4 into 8 is equal to a. So a is equal to 8, which is the first option. So either you can do this or you can take that RHL also. RHL, right hand limit is equal to f of 0. That also you can do. So there right hand limit, what do you get? Limit extends to 0 plus f of x is equal to f of 0. f of 0 is a. So limit extends to 0 plus f of x. Root x divided by root of 16 plus root x minus 4 is equal to a. If here, if I directly apply the limit, I'm going to get uh, 0 by 0. x is 0, so numerator is 0. Here, x is 0 means root 16 we get. Root 16 value is 4. 4 minus 4, that will be 0. So, 0 by 0, therefore, I'll use L hospital rule. Derivative of uh, root x is 1 by 2 root x. Divided by root of 16 plus root x is there, its derivative will be 1 by 2 root of uh, 16 plus root x into the derivative of uh, root x, which is 1 by 2 root x. So this 1 by 2 root x, 1 by 2 root x gets cancelled. Uh, this will come up. Limit extends to 0. You will have uh, 2 into root of 16 plus root x. Apply the limit as extends to 0. When extends to 0, this will become 0. 16 plus 0 is 16, root 16 is 4, so 2 into 4 is equal to 8. You can do it in this way also. Either that or this, both are not necessary. When it is asked in POC, both you have to do. When it is asked in CET, any one is okay. Oh, next question, 109. If the function f of x equal to k cos x by pi minus 2x when x not equal to pi by 2, and 3 when x is equal to pi by 2 is continuous at x equal to pi by 2, then k is equal to. It is continuous, very similar to the earlier problems. It is continuous at x equal to pi by 2 means limit extends to pi by 2 f of x is equal to f of pi by 2. So now limit extends to pi by 2 f of x. What is f of x? f of x is k cos x by pi minus 2x. k cos x divided by pi minus 2x. That is equal to f of pi by 2, which is 3. Okay. Now, if I directly apply the limit, k into cos pi by 2. Cos pi by 2 is 0. Numerator will be 0. Denominator, pi minus 2 into pi by 2, that will be pi minus pi, which is also 0. 0 by 0 is an indeterminate form. So, use uh, L hospital's rule. So, k into derivative of cos x is minus sin x divided by minus 2 is equal to 3. Apply the limit as extends to pi by 2, sin pi by 2, that is 1. So, you get minus k divided by minus 2 is equal to 3. Therefore, k equal to 6. You might remember that we had solved the same problem in our uh, PUC class also. It is, I think it's a problem from our textbook only. Okay. So, this question could be asked in PUC also. In PUC, it is for 4 marks. In CET, it is for 1 mark. And in PUC, don't use L hospital rule. There, uh, right, cos x as sine pi by 2 minus x. Okay. In that way, you solve it. Next question, 110. The function f of x equal to cos 3x minus cos 4x divided by x into sin 2x for x not equal to 0 and f of 0 is 7 by 4 at x equal to 0 is, okay, see how this function is defined. f of x is equal to cos 3x minus cos 4x divided by x sin 2x for x not equal to 0. 
and it is 7 by 4 at x equal to 0. It is, okay, there are king, is it continuous or discontinuous word? Okay. So, let us evaluate this limit. Limit extends to 0, f of x. That means uh, limit extends to 0 cos 3x minus cos 4x divided by x into sin 2x. This limit we have to evaluate. If we directly apply the limit cos 0, 1 minus cos 0, 1. Cos 0, 1 minus 1, you get 0 in the numerator. Denominator also 0. 0 by 0. We can use L hospital rule, but not advisable in this case because in the denominator, you'll have to use uh, product rule, x into sin 2x is there. And here also, once if you differentiate uh, minus sin 3x, you get that will be 0 again. And minus sin 4x, you get that will also be 0. So instead of using L hospital's rule here, using L hospital's rule is somewhat complicated in this case. I will use a cos c minus cos d formula. Cos c minus cos d. In trigonometry, you have learned this formula. Cos c minus cos d is equal to minus 2 sin c plus d by 2 into sin c minus d by 2. Use this formula. Minus 2 sin c plus d by 2. 3x plus 4x. That is 7x by 2. Into sin c minus d by 2. C minus d by 2. So 3 minus 4x. Minus x by 2. Divide by x into sin 2x. Okay. So now you can directly write. Uh, this is equal to, here the answer will be minus 2 into 7 by 2 into minus 1 by 2 divided by 1 into 2. Okay. So, this is equal to 7 by 4. Here, minus 2, minus 2 gets cancelled. 7 by 2 by 2 will give you 7 by 4. I think uh, you have understood that. From where did I get this? Say, you know, limit uh, extends to 0, sin px, uh, tan qx, uh, or sin x, uh, divided by pq rx uh, into sin sx. Uh, that can be written as pq divided by rs uh, in this way. So, this minus 2 as it is. Here 7 by 2 is the coefficient, here minus 1 by 2, here 1, here 2. So that shortcut I have explained to you. So from there I got 7 by 4 here. 7 by 4 and f of 0 is also 7 by 4. f of that's equal to f of 0. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that uh, limit extends to 0, f of x is equal to f of 0. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equal to 0. Hence the answer is continuous. Then, okay. Next, f of x equal to step x is continuous on, where it is continuous? It is discontinuous on z, so continuous on r minus z. Okay, explanation already given. Then, uh, look at this function. f of x equal to 2x minus 1 if x greater than 2 and k if x equal to 2, then x square minus 1 if x less than 2 is continuous at x equal to 2, then k is. This function is continuous at x equal to 2 means left-hand limit must be equal to right-hand limit is equal to functional value, that is f of 2. Then we, then we can get the value for k. So, left-hand limit or right -hand, anything you take, left -hand, I'll take this, left-hand limit is equal to f of 2. So, that means uh, limit extends to 2 minus f of x is equal to f of 2. So now limit extends to 2 minus x approaches 2 from left side. There the function is defined as x square minus. That's equal to f of 2. f of 2 value is k. Put x equal to 2. Put x equal to 2 here. 2 square is 4. 4 minus 1 is equal to k. So k is equal to 3. Third option. Okay, very simple problem. Okay. So, it's not necessary that you have to take uh, this only, you have to take right hand limit also. If you take right hand limit, you are applying the limit for at this point. 
put x equal to two there, two into two four minus one. Next, 115, mod x plus mod x minus 1 is continuous at mod x is continuous everywhere, mod x minus 1 is also continuous everywhere. Sum of two continuous functions is always continuous, right? Therefore, the answer is continuous everywhere. Right. f of x equal to step x plus mod x minus 1 is okay. So, you know, mod x minus 1. This is continuous everywhere. Then step X is discontinuous on Z. At all integers, it is discontinuous. Everywhere else, it is continuous. So there are some, see, sum of two functions, we say sum of two functions is continuous only if both are continuous. If one of them is continuous, one of them is discontinuous, then their sum cannot be continuous, right? Sum of two continuous functions is continuous. So one is continuous, one is discontinuous, means their sum will be discontinuous, okay? So therefore, now it will purely depend on step x. Mod x minus one, it is continuous everywhere. So this function f of x will now purely depend on step x. Wherever step x is continuous, it will be continuous. Wherever step x is discontinuous, it will also be discontinuous. So looking at the options, it is discontinuous at x equal to 0 and 1. Not only at 0, 1, at all integers, but among the given options, this is the right answer. It is discontinuous at x equal to 0, x equal to 1. Next, 117. If f from r to r is defined by f of x equal to 1, cos 3x minus cos x by x square for x not equal to 0, and lambda for x equal to 0. And if f is continuous at x equal to 0, then lambda is equal. Continuous at x equal to 0, limit x tends to 0, f of x is equal to f of 0. So limit x tends to 0, f of x. f of x means cos 3x minus cos x by x square. That is equal to f of 0. f of 0 is lambda. They have already mentioned that it is continuous at 0. Okay. So if you directly apply the limit, you are going to get 0 by 0. Now either use L hospitals rule or use uh, uh, cos C minus cos D formula. Anything is okay. I prefer L hospitals rule. So minus sin 3x into 3. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. So minus of minus plus sin x divided by 2x. Now, if you apply the limit again, becoming 0 by 0, you can either use a uh, split this and get the answer or uh, use L hospital rule. I will prefer L hospital rule. So, minus cos 3x into 3. 3 is already there. So, together it will become 9 plus cos x divided by 2. Apply the limit, we get minus 9 plus 1 by 2 is equal to lambda minus 8 by 2 which means lambda is equal to minus 4 lambda equal to minus 4 which is the second option okay last problem of the day if f of x is equal to 1 minus root 2 sin x by pi minus 4 x if x not equal to pi by 4 and A, if x is equal to pi by 4, is continuous at x equal to pi by 4, then A is equal to, okay? It is continuous at x equal to pi by 4. Directly, you can write the limit x tends to pi by 4 f of x is equal to f of pi by 4. So, limit x tends to pi by 4 f of x. What is f of x? 1 minus root 2 sin x divided by pi minus 4 x is equal to f of pi by 4, which is a. If we directly apply the limit as x tends to pi by 4, here we get sin pi by 4. Sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Root 2 into 1 by root 2, it will become 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Numerator 0. 
denominator 4 4 gets cancelled 5 minus 5 it is also 0 0 by 0 it is an indeterminate form so here you get minus root different usual hospital rule minus root 2 cos x divided by minus 4 that is equal to a okay apply the limit minus minus gets cancelled root 2 into cos pi by 4 that is 1 by root 2 divided by 4. So, root 2 gets cancelled hence a is equal to 1 by 4. a is 1 by 4. Okay, where is the, okay, I forgot to copy the options. Okay, so a is equal to 1 by 4 is the correct answer for this. Okay, students, with this, I will stop today's class. Whatever now, those who have understood everything can leave the meeting, and those who have any doubts can stay back and ask any of your doubts. Any problem, if you want me to explain again. 117, 117. Okay, so 117, f is defined like this cos 3x minus cos x by x square when x not equal to 0, lambda when x equal to 0. It is continuous at x equal to 0, then lambda is equal. It is continuous at x equal to 0. It is continuous at x equal to 0 means uh, limit extends to 0, f of x is equal to uh, f of 0. Okay. So, by definition, limit extends to 0, f of x equal to f of 0. Apply the limit here. Limit extends to the f of x. I am writing cos 3x minus cos x by x square equal to lambda. If we directly apply the limit, I am going to get uh, cos 0 that is 1 minus 1 by 0 which is 0 by 0. So, I have used L hospital rule here. Derivative of cos 3x is minus sin 3x into 3. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Already there is a minus. Minus into minus it has become plus sin x. Now, if you apply the limit, uh, this will be 0, putting x as 0, 0, sin 0, 0, divided by 0. So, 0 by 0. Hence, I have used the hospital rule again. Derivative of sin 3x is cos 3x into 3. Already there is a 3. This 3 into that 3 will become 9. Plus, derivative of sin x cos x divided by derivative of 2x is 2. Now, put x as 0. When I put x as 0, this will give you cos 0, which is 1. Here minus is there, minus 1 into 9, minus 9, plus the cos 0, 1 by 2, minus 9 plus 1, minus 8 by 2, that's equal to minus 4. Okay, then 110. Okay, so look here, cos 3, given that it is continuous at x equal to, okay, we have to test whether it is continuous or not. So, limit extends to 0 f of x is equal to limit extends to 0. f of x is cos 3x minus cos 4x divided by x into sin 2x. Okay. So, cos 3x minus cos 4x. There I have used the cos c minus cos d formula. Cos c minus cos d is equal to minus 2 sin c plus d by 2 into sin c minus d by 2. c plus c d by 2. 3x plus 4x, 7x by 2. Then sin c minus d by 2. 3x minus 4x, that is minus x by 2. Divided by x sin 2x, I have kept as this. Now, okay, maybe you have not understood here. I okay, will give you another idea. After this, that is equal to limit x tends to 0. Minus 2 is there sin 7x by 2 is there, no? I will divide by 7x by 2 into 7x by 2, I will do. Okay? Into, I am writing here only, sin of minus x by 2 divided by minus x by 2 into minus x by 2, I will do. Whole divided by x, I will keep it as it is. Sin 2x by 2x into 2x, I will do. I have divided by 7x by 2, therefore multiplied by 7x by 2. Then divide by minus x by 2, multiplied by minus x by 2. Whole divided by x I have kept as it is. Sin 2x is there, I have divided by 2, multiplied by. Now you just observe, huh? this much will become 1 as x tends to 0, sin theta by theta. This will be 1. 
this will also be 1. Sin minus x by 2 by minus x by 2. Then sin 2x by 2x, this is also 1. So what is remaining now? Here this x, this x I will cancel. This x, this x gets cancelled. So here 2, 2 gets cancelled. Minus 7 by 2 will remain. Minus into minus plus 7 by 2. Denominator 2 is remaining. 7 by 2 by 2 is equal to 7 by 4. Okay, which I directly wrote. Okay. Sir, send video. Why? You have attended the class now, then why do you need video? Videos, why we are uh, recording these videos and publishing is only because uh, many of the students, due to floods, uh, they are got, not getting uh, proper network and uh, there is no power. So we are recording and sending. Okay. Not meant for you. 110 I have explained now. Okay. Any other doubts, sir? Anybody? Shortcut in 110. Okay. Shortcut till here. There is no shortcut. Okay. After this, use uh, cos C minus cos D formula. We got this stage. After this, this minus 2 you retain as it is. Write the coefficient of 7x by 2, which is 7 by 2. Write the coefficient of minus x by 2, that is minus 1 by 2, divided by 1. The, write the coefficient of x, in this case it is 1. Write the coefficient of x here, sin 2x is there, it's, the coefficient of x is 2, that's all. Okay, then 1 not 2, 102. Okay, the set of points of discontinuity of the function f of x is equal to 1 by x square plus x plus 1. Set of points of discontinuity. Its meaning is where and all this function is discontinuous. That is what they are asking. Where this function is discontinuous. Out. So, now numerator is 1. 1 is a constant function. A constant function is continuous everywhere. Denominator is x square plus x plus 1, which is a polynomial function. Every polynomial function is continuous. So, numerator is continuous, denominator is continuous, then that fraction is also continuous, provided the denominator is non-zero. Now we have to ensure that the denominator is non-zero, okay? So if the denominator is non-zero, denominator is non-zero. So x square plus x plus one, when it will become zero? x square plus x plus one, when it will become zero? That you have to observe and you have to remove that. Remove those points where it is becoming zero. So now we observe that x square plus x plus 1 will never become 0, will not be 0 for any real value of x. It will be 0 when x is equal to omega minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2, which is not a real number anyway. So how do we get to know whether these roots are real or not? By finding the discriminant. Discriminant b square minus 4 ac, we got minus 3, which is negative. Since discriminant is 0, roots are imaginary. Therefore, for no real value of x, denominator becomes 0. In other words, denominator will never become zero. Hence, this function is continuous everywhere. Okay. So, if it is continuous everywhere, means where it is discontinuous, what are the points of discontinuity? There is no point of discontinuity. So, the answer is null set. 86th question from yesterday. 86. Where is 86? Okay, 86th from yesterday. Let me explain. Okay. 
प्रोडक्ट रूल यूज 2 plus h into derivative of cos 2 plus h is minus sin 2 plus h plus cos 2 plus h into derivative of 2 plus h which is 1 minus the derivative of cos 2 cos 2 which is here divided by h is there whose derivative is 1 apply the limit as h tends to 0 this will be 2 This is two plus zero is two. Two into minus sine two plus cos two. We are putting it as zero, so cos two will get. So the answer is cos two minus two sine cos two minus two sine two. First option. Okay. Then one not five. One hundred and five. Explain the last step. Okay, I'll explain all the steps. Sir, f of x is defined like this: two power x plus two minus sixteen by four power x minus sixteen. When x not equal to two and uh, a when x equal to. Now limit extends to two f of x. Since it is continuous at two, we can write uh, limit extends to two f of x is equal to f of two. So limit extends to two f of x. So what is f of x? Two power x plus two minus sixteen divided by four power x minus sixteen. That's equal to f of two. That is equal to a. So now, if we directly apply the limit two plus two four here, two power four that is sixteen. Sixteen minus sixteen numerator is zero. Denominator putting x as two will give you four square, which is sixteen minus sixteen zero. Zero by zero is an indeterminate form. So I will use L hospital's rule. Derivative of two power x plus two is two power x plus two into log two into the derivative x plus two is there. Derivative x plus two is one, so I am not mentioning okay. minus sixteen. Because derivative is zero. Denominator four power x is there. The derivative of four power x is four power x into log four. Okay. Now apply the limit. Putting x as two will give you two power two plus two, which means two power four into log two divided by four square into log. Four out. Okay. Two power four is sixteen. Four square is also sixteen. Sixteen sixteen gets cancelled. Log two by log four is there. Log four here. This log four I will write it as log two square. Okay. Four can be as two square. Now log m power n is equal to n log m. Right. Log m power n is equal to n log m. So this will give you two log two. Now log two log two gets cancelled. One by two will remain. Okay, is that clear, Preeti? Okay, any more doubts? Okay, that's it, I guess. So with this, we have completed uh, level one. Tomorrow, I will go discuss level two problems. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.